Hi, Stitchers. Hi, I'm Keisha. I'm Laura, and welcome to the Pattern Queens episode 97. Today is Sunday, September 4th, and this is a channel about cross stitch and friendship and rambles and lots and lots of shenanigans and trying out a new filming time and random yells from my front room. So <laughs> who knows what's going on? <laughs> and who knows what you are viewing because on my screen, we are stacked instead of side by side. Yeah. And on my screen, we're side by side. So who knows? Oh. Yeah, but we're here. We're here. <laughs> we are. So it is Labor Day weekend in the U.S., which means that we get a, a bonus day off tomorrow. Woohoo! Woo we love that. Uh, but also, thank you to everyone who is joining us today. If you're new here, settle in. Try to just wait it out for a little bit. It will get a little less nutty as we go along. <laughs> no, it won't, Laura. No, it won't. <laughs> And if you're returning, thank you. We yes, love having you come back. And you know it's not going to get any better. <laughs> yes. You must just be here to like watch the craziness. <laughs> so Keisha, what's new in your world this week? Uh, not a whole lot is new, actually. Um, my boy got a haircut last week, so that's been an adjustment. We don't really have to brush his hair anymore, but he looks like a completely different kid. And I am very, very thankful for having tomorrow off because it was a crazy work week. So oh. <laughs> how about you? What's been going on with you? Well, I can agree with that because it's it was our second week with kids and we're settling in and the kids are doing great, really. It's just Good. an adjustment for them. And it is so strange to be back. And we had professional development. I'm watching the cat, you guys, one of the cats because she's trying to decide if she can jump or not. And I have a whole stack by me. Um, but Friday was professional development. So we had meetings and things and the kids were excited. They only had to go to school four days this last week and they'll only go four days this next week. So that is exciting. <laughs> um, also, I'm a tennis fan and I got to watch Serena Williams play on the night. She beat the world number two. Now, I have not seen anything beyond that because we've just been running. So, but it was exciting. And to know that this is um, where she will retire. Um, mm -hmm. That's, that's the end of a big, big career. Oh, so, for sure. Yeah. One and of the I, most recognizable faces. Like I don't even watch tennis and I know all about her. <laughs> yes. Because she's Wonder Woman, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um. <clears throat> It was really interesting. One of the things that she said that kind of struck home with me is that she said she had not been that relaxed during a match since 1997, oh, wow. which would have been when she turned pro. Yeah. And, you know, I think about all the stress that people hold and just how they deal with it. Mm -hmm. And I know there, there are a lot of people who are, who talk about, you know, how much stress there is here and there. And, I really feel like it's just how you deal with it that gets you through right. and makes you better. So, sure. <laughs> and I'm hoping to really check in on it and see if she and Venus are still in the doubles because I know they were playing one last time as doubles. Oh, that's so, exciting too. Yes. So if you can't tell, I'm a little bit of a, of a tennis geek. I just like it. I don't know anything about tennis. <laughs> <laughs> um, we've also had some really great chats. Last weekend, we had the, for the Black Needle, last weekend, we had the September chat or the August chat. And last night we had the September chat. So, you know, yes. and it yes. looks like the October chat will not be until the very last weekend of the month. Unless I talk Katie Landis into doing a bonus chat. Well, okay. And then, of course, we had a great chat on our channel with Fawn and Sean. Oh, that was so much fun. Yes, yes. So, of course, you know, that was just a great time and meeting new friends. So if you haven't watched that, you should because they're wonderful. 
Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we we all worked on our um, crosswing collection. You'll get to see those with Keisha and I in a couple of minutes. So yes. are you ready to hop into the cross stitch? I am. Okay, first thing up is stash. Oh, stash. Okay, so I do have some new stash, but one of them I'll show you in finishes. And a lot of the rest of it I'll show you in whips. But I will show you that I got the Bitsy Keep for the hands-on design costume party from that So Kelly Co. So I'm really excited about having this and using this. I had a few um, flosses on here and James came by and went, my floss. <laughs> okay, buddy. I guess I need to keep those picked up until you go to bed. <laughs> Um, I really just have one thing that I'm going to show. Um, we went out to drop off a project to be framed and I picked this up, which is winter wind from Prairie Schooler. And I just really oh, wow. like the little samplers. Yes. That's very pretty. So, and other than that, I really don't think I got anything this week. Yeah. Oh, okay. I think I threw you off. We normally do finishes first, right? That's okay. That's okay. I just roll. I just went with it. I just went with it. <laughs> Whatever I say, you just pull out, right? Yeah. Yeah. I've got it all here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So how about finishes? Okay. So stash part two. <laughs> One of my finishes. Um, last weekend, I bought round red sampler because Katie Landis said, I've been thinking about starting that. And I said, do you, do you just want to do it? I'll get it too. So this is round red sampler from heart and hand. And I bought a scrap of 28 count linen and I finished the thing. So I didn't finish it the same day. So, um, I didn't use the called for red. I used cherry wine from gentle art. And I love that color. Yes. It's one of my very favorite reds. And then this is over one. So it's teeny tiny. So these patterns are pretty small. It's smaller than the size it was printed on the on the thing. So, <laughs> and Katie's is over too, and she finished hers also. So you guys started and finished them together. Mm -hmm. That was kind of exciting. Yeah, I know that never happens with the sal, right? <laughs> <laughs> and then um, I also finished Mill Hill Taco. Taco Tuesday. Taco Tuesday that went into Taco Wednesday so I could finish it. <laughs> Here's the finished thing. There are a ton of beads in there, but they're mostly the bigger beads. So they went pretty fast. If you turn it more flat, do we get to see the beads? Do you know oh. what I mean? If you lay it down. Uh, oh, yeah. So you can kind of see. Yes, you can see them like putting up beads. on top of there. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, most of most of what's inside the taco are beads. Wow. Okay, are you going to turn it into a magnet and put it on the fridge or what? I think I probably will turn it into a magnet and put it on the fridge. That would be kind of fun. So, um, so cute. Yeah, because most of these uh, little, the small Mill Hill kits come with a magnet that you can put on your piece. So that's probably what I'll end up doing. With it. So I just need to cut it out. They have some other food things like that too, right? Yeah, they have uh, popcorn. They have pizza. I have an eyeball martini, but that's probably not the same thing. <laughs> I don't know. That would be cute on the fridge too with the collection. Right, right, right. Not. <laughs> mm. So I'll probably get more of those. Just, I really like those small mill hills. They're really fun. So it took and me I, a month to finish it because I started it on my birthday, which was July 31st. And I uh, finished it on August 31st. Wow. So. Um, and you looked at what finish numbers those were for you, I think. Yes. So those were finishes eight and nine for the year. So I'm better than one a month. <laughs> You're doing great. <laughs> Thank you. Me? Yes. Okay. I um, pulled out I haven't even filmed my September whip parade yet, but I will do that probably right after this. Mm -hmm. This one I finished it from Fancy Hat <laughs> came up as uh, one of the one of the calls for this month. This is a project that I adopted from garage sale at our LNS um, a couple of years ago, and 
she just had two of the pumpkins stitched and I worked on the rest of it. I think this is exactly as called for. So it would be 26 count Heather Field over two using all of the over dyes. Wow. The only thing I did is I had a Victorian motto that I used for this big pumpkin because mm -hmm. it called for this light color to be both of these pumpkins. Mm -hmm. And I just changed it. I think if I had left it, it would have looked even more like a woman standing there because yeah. it really would have looked like a dress. <laughs> it does look like she has her arms in front of her and she's holding something yes. in her way. <laughs> so that's it though. I'm so excited. And that was finish number 14 for me. So, I wondered if you finished it. And this is what it was in, which made my friend Vicky very jealous because of the cat. And then inside are splat cats. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So gotta love that, right? That's for sure. That's it for me. That's my finish this week. Wow, that's a good one. Yeah. 14. Wow. That's that's really a good accomplishment. Like, you know, since you've been just touching all of your whips and haven't really been focusing on finishes. That's great. I made it a priority to try and finish one project every month. Mm -hmm. Now I will say that, I mean, I have 14, so I have a couple of extras. Actually, that's for uh, September already, mm -hmm. but that would mean that I have five extra. And I know two of those were the models. Mm -hmm crazy models that we stitched <laughs> like mad women right so. right you mean the one that was over nine thousand stitches and the one that was over eleven thousand stitches yes, yes. the twenty thousand <laughs> stitches that i did in two months to get <laughs> two models done and then you did pretty close to the same because you did the almost twelve thousand and uh -huh. how and the, again you almost twelve thousand <laughs> For the, yeah. for the two camp models. Oh, so. for the two together. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. So you were pushing that 25,000 in two months. No big deal. That's a lot of stitches <laughs> when we say it that way. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm like, what I did do? <laughs> <laughs> oh, are you ready to get into some whips? I am ready to get into some whips. So um, in the two weeks since we saw each other last, I've worked on a pretty big variety of things, I feel like. Um, first, I'll show you what I did on Death by Cross Stitch from Long Dog Sampler. So here is that. Uh, this is stitched on a piece of 36 count agave from Weeks Dye Works. And it's not it's super exciting, but... I worked over in this border over here, and this just kind of keeps going across the rest of the piece. So I still got a lot of that done. Um, our friend Eunice had it so that she's basically like all the way over one way and all the way down. And I thought, well, that might be kind of exciting to see. So, but anyway, here's the whole piece so far. And I don't even think I could show you how big this piece of fabric is. It's, it's almost it's, a half yard of fabric. Yeah, it's it's pretty massive. It's a 27 by 31 and it's got a three inch border around it. So it's a big piece and it was cut for this design. So um, it's going to be a big one, guys. Yes. I'm sure if you've ever seen Death by Cross Stitch finished, uh, you know, that thing is massive. And I'm sometimes I'm like, what did I get myself into? <laughs> <laughs> and then you look across the screen and you're like, oh yeah, it's her fault. <laughs> well, that's the story of my life mostly. <laughs> <laughs> but really it's my fault. Cause I'm like, of course I'll do whatever you're stitching. I'll jump on that. I just um, led her astray. And there's no turning back. There's no turning <laughs> back. Um, the next thing I worked on was ABC dinosaurs from the clouds factory. And these are all of the parts that are out so far. Um, these three dinosaurs here were what were added for September, but I'm nowhere even close. Um, so this is on a piece of 36 count Arctic Fox from Fiber on a Whim. Here's you were doing I... fine until you had those 25,000 stitches come along. It's fine. I'll catch up maybe. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I mostly worked since we talked last time on this dinosaur here, um, so he's not finished. I was talking like, oh yeah, I'm totally going to finish these two dinosaurs by the next time we film. And I didn't, I didn't get there. 
So, but I finished two things in the meantime. So you were distracted by a few other things and that was fine. <laughs> so anyway, this is where I am so far. So I am in June. So hopefully I can catch up. My kind of my loose plan is to get June and July done this month, but we'll see how it goes. And then I also put in, oh, I didn't bring up a picture of this one. Sorry, guys. Let me scroll back in my pictures because I know I have a picture of this. Anyway, I've been trying to work on um, Summer and Stars Hollow from the Black Needle Society every day, but it hasn't really been happening. But I have put in a few more stitches since we saw each other last. Here's where I am on it so far. It's such this, a bright, happy section. It's so bright and happy. So this is actually Autumn and Stars Hollow. So that's what I've got done of summer. <laughs> But it's really a bright and happy one. And I look forward to working on it some more. I've just been, I was focusing on trying to get some things finished. And um, on another thing, and I'll show you that in a minute. So uh, I also showed you the start that we did with Fawn and Sean. So this is Crosswing Collection. It's Yellow Warbler Biscor Nest. And I started working on this scissor fob here. This is on a piece of 28 count white linen. Uh, what I didn't realize about that scissor fob is the border part is over two and everything inside of it is over one. <laughs> a lot of that's teeny a 30, tiny little stitches. That's a 32 by 32 box inside of there. So <laughs> it's going to take a little bit of time. And then the back of the scissor fob is just this border part just for the entire size of the of the scissor fob. So that'll be nice. Maybe I should like go in between working on the back of it and the front of it just to give myself breaks. Um, but I really like this. and I'm looking forward to getting back to it because I kind of like stitching over one. I have to be in the mood for it. But in case you guys are keeping count, I stitched a whole thing over one on Saturday and then started this. <laughs> that's, that was a... a piece with a significant amount of over one on Sunday. So maybe I'm getting back into my, I'm starting a whole bunch of over one things. Who knows? Um, and then the last thing I worked on was the costume party from Hands On Design. And this is just the picture that um, they have on their Instagram right now, showing the first two parts. So the first part was everything on this side started with the bottle right the, mm -hmm. the pink purple bottle yes and then the cauldron the skeleton head or the skull the skeleton head it's called a skull the book and <laughs> the pumpkin up top are what's in the second part so this is where the rest of my stash comes in so i bought um this fabric from fabrics by stephanie it's the called four fabric and then um, the flosses, and then also the needle minder from that So Kelly Co. So I finished the first part, and I got a good start on that cauldron. That looks so, so good. And I just want to let you know that there are over 700 stitches in the first part, and that doesn't include the back stitching. And there's pretty extensive back stitching. This whole um, middle thing here is back stitched all the way around. Mm hmm. And then there's some stitching up here and on the bird. So it's a pretty intense thing. Um, I didn't finish the first part until yesterday. So the first part came out on the first, the second part came out yesterday, and then we'll get the last part tomorrow. And I did not open up my email from, <laughs> with the second part until I finished the first part. I was like, I'm going to finish that first part. <laughs> <laughs> I, on the other hand, will be waiting and will probably start when everything is out because I stitch from the bottom up. Yeah, well, it's, I mean, it started this, well, I don't know where the the bottom right corner is, but it started on the right side, so mm -hmm. maybe that'll be good for you, so. We'll have to see. I'm really curious what will be added to that. Yeah, show. yeah, I know, because it, it looks like based on the, based on the picture here, it's 
you know, the bracket for the shelf is right here and the fabric isn't really big enough to do a whole lot more over to that side. So I'm wondering if it's going to be something on the top or something on the bottom, but I'm excited to see. That'll be anyway. interesting. Yes. So those are my whips. Hopefully the next time we get together, I'll have that done. But I've just learned to not promise anything. <laughs> <laughs> because life happens, right? Right. Right. <laughs> Okay, so I will show you mine. I didn't pull the picture out and there is plastic in there, but this is Life After Death by Long Dog Samplers. And it is mine. I love it. Um, and I'm doing it on Pattern Keeper, so I don't really have anything for the cover. I have to do this the right way up. And I did catch up on my stitches. Wow. So that's okay. where I am. Um, I hit the 20% mark because mine is significantly smaller than Keisha's. What did we decide? It's like 30,000. Yeah. Just smaller. <laughs> and what I, you know, I had run this line up. So what I'm trying to do right now is to just finish everything in here and make sure that it really meets up. And then, yes, I will be going across the bottom to see how far over it goes. Mm-hmm. So I don't have that much extra on top. I'll probably just leave it. Yeah. But I'm loving this. This is 36 count antique hydrangea linen from r, r Reproductions. And I'm using a, um, I'm using a silk from Silks for You. I have this one cut. I, I cut it in three sections and then I'm just holding it with my quilting mm -hmm. peels. But I love it. I mean, the range of color is just fabulous. Right. So uh, this project is probably one of the reasons that I wanted to do the floss of the month with them. Mm -hmm. Because trying to decide which color I wanted was really difficult. And right. if to be able to look at some things will be much better. So, um, and then I'm hoping I have everything out. I worked... At the end of the month, I kind of worked on things for a few days each. So the, next I have the Flower a Day sampler. It's the Flower a Day Stitch Along from Carolyn Manning Designs. This has come out in some different colorways as well. So kind of fun. I am doing mine on a green solo cashel linen from Silk Weaver. And I'm doing it over one. Because why not? And originally, so yes, <laughs> originally I um, was going to just stitch using whatever flosses I was using on current projects, but I decided this week that that was too much of a hassle to figure out. And I'll show you why. I I have not done anything with these, but that's the amount of wow. floss that this takes. So I I just decided, no, I'm just going to buy the DMC and just keep going. So this little corner may be slightly different colored because most of those are Victorian motto. Well, and I would like to point out that Lara uses a petite needle. So when you're looking at that needle for scale. Oh, yeah, that's like a one inch needle. Yeah, you can see with my fingers there, tiny. huh? <laughs> yeah. And I did... Um, I had just a little bit of this flower done and I finished stitching it and did all the greenery. And that wow. was, That's that was a, a big chunk for me to do over one. Right. So um, I'm finding it much easier now that I'm using a hoop, excuse me. Mm -hmm. And it's in a blue Q bag because doesn't that make you think there are flowers in this bag? Yes. Um, then it was first Friday, fancy ladies. So Shakespeare's fairies came out. Love them. However, I was kind of on a, I don't really want to stitch on that. I want to finish my pumpkin patch. Right. So I kind of procrastinated. And most of the time on Friday, I did this. Uh, and aren't they just gloriously gorgeous? But also, go ahead. Sometimes 
kit maintenance is just as much fun as stitching, oh. like getting everything all set up and just looking at all your materials and everything. It's just fun. And look how many cards there are. So I started this at camp, at Camp Black Needle last month. So I used um, floss tags that were given to me at camp. So, and this is not all of them by any means. They're the ones that were already punched. But what I did was kind of fun because now we're starting to see one of the lanterns. So it looks like something. And I have a little clip at the top so that I know which way is up. Right. Um, some of my friends have started putting an arrow pointing up or a letter T just with a pen or marker. And mm -hmm. yeah. But that's my progress on that. This is on 30. I was trying to decide what count. 32. It is 32 count sand from Fiber on a Whim. And they're obviously her uh, dye lot that time came out kind of green, which I love because I think it fits perfectly with the project. And, you know, everything about this was, oh, camp, 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 camp. So I bought this bag from the 805 Stitcher and it's squirrels. You know, what do squirrels have to do with this? I don't know. They're in the woods at the same time. Mm -hmm. But it's such a cute one. And I love this. It was so fun to have Tara retreat and get to meet her in person. And that is that one. And then in July, um, Katie got to pick a project for me. And I had put it away in a safe spot so I would know right where it was. So, of course, I had no idea where it was. Yeah. But uh, what she picked is Anniversaries of the Heart. And I am on the second one, which is Valentine Rose. Wow. And I found it last night. I was, you know, in my room, looked up and said, oh, that's where it is. <laughs> and it's still on my hoop because I was working on it. Yes. And I got... I'm over my 500 stitches, so I'm technically done with it. Um, I already had this border and I put in the little urn and parts of the stuff in the urn and then all of these frames and the door frame and these few little outlines of bricks because not all the bricks are outlined in the same color. Like this color, I am done with. Huh. All the rest of them will be a slightly different color but so good. this is on a piece of um 36 count ale from picture this plus and this will be i will do they show you a mock-up down here this will be oh wow all of this so Massive. a little bit every month or every time that it i pull it out but it's i have all of the um charts i'm buying more floss as i go along mm -hmm. but that is that makes me july whip july whip go complete nice look at you go yes and um august i did finish my whip go on that i believe i am current which wow. that's a little bit amazing yeah that's really great um yes so now all i have is what's called for september and actually i have completed one of them wow <laughs> because it was um one of them that was called was 500 stitches on the closest to finish monthly whip which was pumpkin patch yeah. i stitched on it three days so the first day counted as my day one as my one day that i give to each project and the mm -hmm. other two days um got my 500 stitches probably a few more than 500 but it was so close by then right you got to finish it there were 270 stitches in that bottom checkerboard mm -hmm. 
border. So, and I did quite a bit more than that. So, yes. Yeah. And then my other one will be 500 stitches on the furthest from a finished monthly whip, which I will get things up and show you, but that one will be Garden Fair by the Courtney Collection. And that's a beautiful one. And I've wanted to get some more work in on it. So it will be fun to focus maybe the second half of the month. I'll probably leave it till the last mm -hmm. and then just stitch on it as much as I can through the end of the month. And of course I need uh, another 1000 stitches on life after death. Oh, and wow, I have a little more crazy plan uh, that I thought I would just kind of introduce here. So while we were at stitch day last Saturday, I talked to one of our local friends, Chris Ann, and I've seen that she's using a hashtag and it's hashtag 59 by 60. And I thought, Hmm, I wonder if she's having the same big life event I am. Mm -hmm. So she is. Next year, we will both turn 60 and hers will be in February. So she's most of the way through. No, she's halfway through her year. And I am just two months past the start of my year. So the idea is that we try and finish 59 whips before we turn 60. Wow. And I went through, you guys know, I'm down to 163. Um, I went through and kind of identified projects that I thought that I could maybe finish. And then my lovely friend Keisha reminded me that during that time, I will be stitching two models. So that's why I know that it's 20,000 stitches, because for 20,000 stitches, it will be focused on start to finish projects. Mm -hmm. But um I've already finished three because I get to count the one in July. It came after my birthday on the third, one in August and the one yesterday. When I looked, when I did the math on it, I needed to finish a project every just over five days to, mm -hmm. to do it at a regulated pace. That will not happen. I will do, you know, what I do, but I will be doing the costume party and it looks like I will be able to do that pretty quickly because mm -hmm. Keisha's doing a great job keeping up. So she's going to be my inspiration here. I'll be your cheerleader. I'll be uh, like, With this many stitches in this part and this many stitches in this part. <laughs> we were talking about that last night and how, um, how people approached stitching the Frogwort sampler differently this year. And a large part of it, I feel like is because you posted how many stitches were in each segment. And so people definitely planned and said, oh, okay, for this one, I'm going to do, we're, we're obviously getting an invasion here. Um, this one, I'm going to do these two motifs because I know I can finish that. Right, right. And, and so basically what I did is um, that model was uh, compatible with Pattern Keeper. So I basically went and marked off like I had stitched it, um, each of the motifs, and then, you know, just figured out how many stitches were in each one of those. And yeah, and then I put it down because whenever I have something with a deadline, I like to count out how many stitches. So I know, okay, I need to have this done at the end of this day so that I can stay on track with meeting the deadline. So I'm glad that that was helpful. I do plan on doing, because I've, I've done that every year. But this was the first year when we had a pattern keeper file and I felt better about the amount of stitches because it wasn't just like an estimate. So if you're attending Frog Wars, I plan on posting that again next year. So. <laughs> well, and the, I mean, the funny thing is that I didn't think to ask you to do that until one of our friends was trying to plan out how she was going to get it finished during mm -hmm. retreat. And I'm like, oh, Keisha sent me the numbers. I'm sure she still has them. Right. <laughs> and made the post and people were like yes yeah because so, I remember whenever I first did that I sent it to you it was like just in case you're wondering <laughs> which is fun to look at yeah. and, and know what it will be but there were so many strategies that I feel like are good for any projects but people who were trying to because it's that's the competitive stitching event mm -hmm. so people would outline like a whole motif and then they would just all they would have to do during an event was just sit and fill and they didn't need a pattern because they had already done whatever would be different inside the motif 
Yeah. And um, I was trying to think what else. There were people, it was the funniest thing to see those though, because it was almost like a skeleton of the project. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Because they had everything outlined or you know, just kind of outlined right. loosely around. And it was so weird to see it that way because you and I absolutely we started Low off as events. Yeah. And stitch heavily and we helped Katie make corrections. And mm -hmm. it it just was is interesting to see people um take different approaches and figure it out. For sure. Well. Wow. And I, um, I use kind of my counting strategy for just like my personal stitching. Like we were kind of talking the other day about this time toward the end of the year. Last year, I had a couple of different projects that I wanted to finish. And so I counted up how much I had um, in those projects and then was like, okay, so if I divide by three months, this is what I need to do each month on those projects and then figured out, okay, I'm going to stitch the leaves on this tree is what I'm doing this month. And, you know, so I kind of use, I don't do that for all of my stitching um, because that would just be a lot, uh, but I do it for some of it. And that's kind of how I work and plan toward, you know, bigger finishes that mm -hmm. I do. So are you doing anything special for sampler September? Ooh, so I think I'm going to bring out Aberlown at Abra Lowney 1825 um because I haven't worked on her for a while and I really really like her and then um I don't I have it with I can't oh. wait to see what quirks she has in store for you next oh man if you if you haven't listened to the saga of Abra Lowney 1825 from Erica Michaels um uh, there's just a lot to it like uh, some of the parts it wants you to stitch on the wrong thread uh, the eyelets are irregular eyelets so they're just like one leg is longer than the other in some parts she's a weird one but I really really like working on it and some of it says oh yeah this is just kind of done freehand and I'm like what <laughs> <laughs> um, so I would say that that one would probably not be recommended for Ada simply mm -hmm. because you have to stitch on the in-between thread and that yeah. means you would be splitting uh, right yeah. splitting the square on ada yeah so. no and, and and you could adjust if you wanted to but if you wanted to stitch it as charted it's definitely one that would be better for linen or even weave mm -hmm. for sure um and then i was thinking about and i'm sorry i don't have it with me but i was thinking about starting um the river um for modern folk embroidery which was something that came in a black needle society box i've been kind of thinking about starting that too and i think i have uh good fabric for it oh yeah you have it um I think I have good fabric for it I need to uh, we <laughs> we figured this out in a Panera parking lot that I probably <laughs> have <laughs> and then I was looking um in my uh in the room that I'm in I have the silks that we got for Christmas in the Black Needle Society Christmas box so I was like hmm maybe I could use some of these so I'm still trying to figure it out but that might come out too so what about you what are you working on well I have this whole bag full of things right down here beside me um mm -hmm. I had thought about starting a sampler this month and we'll see if I stick with that or if I decide that I don't really need to do that I thought maybe I had it. oh I do so um in a box that we got last year i got this one which mm -hmm. is h purdy 1822 wow. it's really beautiful and also in that box we got oh kind of kind of messy from silken colors we got these two colors and I thought that could be really gorgeous to yeah. play with those in there and um, and do that. So I'm kind of excited about that. Um, it could be that. But I also have, I have to talk with you and see if we're planning to do a um, first day of, of autumn start. Awesome. You know what I'm thinking over here? We're both doing huge things from long dog samplers. Yes. <laughs> so we will be working on samplers. We will. <laughs> um, but I have this really gorgeous sampler 
that I bought uh, an older magazine and it's all in like oranges and very, mm. very fallish feeling to me. And oh, it's yeah. so different than things that I stitch right. that I thought maybe that would be fun to pull out and do. But then I also have, you know, yeah. I say I'm not a sampler stitcher, but I have a lot of them. Right. I've given up. I am a sampler stitcher. I am not a reproduction sampler stitcher for the most part. So um, it just, yeah. yeah, my, but my big plan, I think the thing for me, I talked about the 59 by 60 is that that's kind of going to help give me some direction because, you know, this year I have taken all of my whips and I made the goal to touch every single one. And I will have touched nearly all of them because there are a few that decided to go on walkabout and who knows where they, where they landed. But when right. I find them, I will tuck them in and make mm -hmm. sure that I touch them too. Um, but then I was trying to decide whether I would do that again next year because I've really liked it this year. Right. I haven't started that many projects because every month is like, a whole new set of projects right they just happen to already be started and I don't have to fight with that yeah for sure so but I think if I'm doing the 59 by 60 I've identified a bunch of them and probably what I'll do is just pull them and put them in a couple of um, bags that I can keep handy and I can just reach and grab and work on those yeah. so great plan. and my idea with that is that if like anniversaries of the heart is made up of all of those different charts. So each one will be a finish. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. They're big enough to be. So, well, and you're over here doing 59 by 60 and I don't even think I could do 33 by 34. So. <laughs> <laughs> but how many finishes have you had since your birthday? Oh, oh I guess I finished three things since my birthday. See, so, <laughs> I guess I bought, I've got a good start right. But. impossible things are happening every day <laughs> <laughs> i just have to stop working on such big projects <laughs> <laughs> i don't think that will happen no probably not just <laughs> everyone tell me your favorite mill hill ornament size <laughs> <laughs> yeah people were saying to me oh if you're gonna do that then you're gonna have to stitch a bunch of ornaments no my plan will not include me starting a bunch yes it it just won't my plan will be more i'm going to work on what's already in my stash and get that done and because that's been my push um i had thought that i would like to be under 100 whips by mm -hmm. my birthday so this kind of pushes me yeah, toward so that yeah and sure. i would be i mean currently i have 163 whips I will tell you that my lovely friend, Katie Landis has uh, already talked about, we did 22 for 22 last year. We started 22 new projects. We've already talked about starting 23 projects oh for 23. <laughs> so we may be doing that. Yeah. Well, <laughs> then you got a little bit of a harder fight, right? <laughs> yes. So then maybe the goal will be to have it below 150 because right. that would be, I mean, and that should be easily done, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, for sure. And if anybody could do it, it's you, because I know whenever you get really close to a finish, you're like, I am just going to finish it. <laughs> <laughs> I was, Even if it's a thousand stitches, I'm just going to finish it. <laughs> I think that's why I was so irritated Friday because I really didn't have very much left to do. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to finish it. And yeah, I stayed up after we got off Friday night. I put the fancy lady down and I picked up the pumpkin patch. Mm -hmm. And at three o'clock in the morning, I finally said, all right, no, no, I only have 135 stitches to go and I just can't do it. I've got to go to bed. No, see, and I completely skipped over first. Friday fancy lady because I'm like I'm working on the costume party I can come back for fancy lady <laughs> <laughs> she'll wait for me <laughs> so yeah that's I mean that's a lot of plans and you and I we've talked a lot about what we think we might do for the end of the year what we think we might do for next year 
So there's a lot going on in both of our heads. We just got to put it all down. <laughs> it's on those spreadsheets. We just have to pull it out, right? Yeah, yeah. New tab. <laughs> so do you think we've rambled enough for today? Oh boy, and we got up to some shenanigans. <laughs> <laughs> So I think all that's left to say is bye. Bye. Have a good week. <laughs>